Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read in March. So I started off this month in a very thriller reading mood, but also a fantasy reading mood. So a lot of these are like thriller mysteries, but also fantasies. So... <laughs> But I specifically picked up this first book because I read the Mind F series in February and I was in like a revenge thriller mood and this was one of the books that popped up when I was like asking about what revenge thrillers there are. So the first book I read was The Collective by Alison Galen. This is basically a revenge thriller about this group of mothers who kind of finds justice for their children because justice wasn't given. And it's kind of like got secret society vibes. This was a pretty like fun time. I really enjoyed the first half of the book, but the second half, not so much. And the ending was kind of unsatisfying to me. So I put down that I gave this 3.5 stars, but after sitting with it the whole month, I think I would just give this a three star. It was a fun time. It was worth the read, but I'll never read it again. And I'll probably forget all about it. Then along with that revenge thriller theme, the next book I picked up was Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. Now this one delivered to me. I really liked this one, but basically this like high school teacher goes missing and everybody's freaking out about it, uh, except for his wife who is only freaking out about it because she knows where she put his body and that's not there now. Like he's literally missing. <laughs> So it's kind of one of those where it's like a good for her situation, but you're also like trying to figure out like what happened and like where her dead husband is. <laughs> but yeah, this was a super fun time. I really enjoyed it. I really liked this one and I gave it four stars. Then I finished up my reread of A Court of Silver Flames. This was my third time reading this one. Um, this dust jacket is from an Etsy shop called Stars That Dream. It basically was made to match the original like covers and I really like it. <laughs> you all know that I love these books so so much so this one was a definite five out of five. I really enjoyed my reread and this actually rereading this spurned the idea to do the Sarah J Mass read-along that I'm doing with my friend Christina. We're reading every single one of Sarah J Mass's books. I'll link the announcement video up above if you haven't heard of it yet but we do reading sprints that aren't spoilery they're just reading sprints but we read the books for the read-along so if you're not participating you can still join but then we are doing a live show for every book after we read it. We're dedicating about two weeks to each book so yeah after I read this I'm like you know what I kind of want to just reread everything and so I asked Christina if she wanted to do this read-along with me so th after finishing this this was kind of like what got me to want to reread everything. So yeah, five out of five. Then the next book I picked up was The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. This was my book of the month pick for this month and kind of getting a lot of buzz in March. A lot of people were reading this. It was Gabby's book troupe book club pick and yeah I just I wanted to read it because I really liked the guest list by this author and so I was really excited for this new release and I didn't like this one quite as much but it was still like a fun thriller. It has very lock every door vibes because it's set in this apartment building in Paris obviously and this girl Jess is moving in with her brother who she hasn't seen in a while they're like not super close but she needs a place to stay and when she gets to this apartment he's not there even though he knew she was coming and so she's trying to find out what happened to her brother and a lot of suspicious things are going on in this apartment building it kind of seems like everybody is up to something and so she's trying to get to the bottom of that and yeah I thought this was a really fun time the twists were really good I didn't see them coming at all and it was just an enjoyable read like was it great not really but was it a fun time definitely so I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars then I picked up Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. Um, yeah, this book is getting a lot of hype and I had really wanted to read it. I heard that it was really funny, really good, like uh, just like a fun mystery. And this was honestly just too ridiculous for me. I just think that this genre is maybe not for me. I I read this in one of my vlogs and did kind of a spoilery rant about it because it was just it was so over the top and like just way too much and so unbelievable, so ridiculous that it pulled me out of the story. I just really didn't like it. Um, basically, this author, Finlay Donovan, is in a Panera pitching her next book to her agent. And she's like falling on hard times. She's really struggling. And so she really needs money. And as she's pitching this book in this Panera, this woman overhears her and thinks that she's a hitman and hires her to kill her husband. And Finlay's like, 
I'm an author. And the lady's like, no, you don't have to lie to me. I, I know that you're a killer. It's fine. Please just kill my husband. Here's a bunch of money for it. And so she's like, mm, do I do it? And it basically takes off from there. And if that concept alone isn't the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard. Anyways, I did not enjoy this one. I thought that I might. Like, the writing is not bad. But I just, it was just too ridiculous for me. I won't be continuing on with this. I gave this two stars. Then this month, I decided to start a new series, which was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I have been loving it. And that is the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. So I read the first four books in March. Um, I didn't read them all back to back, but I have been thoroughly enjoying this. The first one is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn, if I didn't say that. <laughs> The second one is A Perilous Undertaking. The third one is A Treacherous Curse. And then the fourth one is A Dangerous Collaboration. And basically it's set in London in the 1880s, the late 1880s. And it follows this girl, Veronica Speedwell, who is a lepidopterist. So she like studies butterflies. She's a lady scientist. And she doesn't really follow society's rules. She does kind of whatever she wants. She doesn't really care what society expects of her. She just does her thing. And one day, after her aunt dies, somebody breaks into her house and then another man shows up and is attempting to save her and says that she's in grave danger and she needs to leave with him. He's going to London. He'll protect her. And she's like, actually, I need to go to London anyways. So if you're offering, like, pay for my trip and I'll go with you. <laughs> but she doesn't really believe that there's any grave danger. And then that guy takes her to his friend Stoker, who is meant to be the one to protect her. And... That guy that like brought her to Stoker, that was like saving her, ends up being murdered. And so Stoker and Veronica try to figure out what's going on and if Veronica really is in grave danger. And it just sparks this series of like investigations that they do, like each book covers different things, but it follows Veronica and Stoker's relationship, their friendship, which is my favorite freaking thing. And I've just been having the time of my life. They're such fast reads. It's so much fun. And I am not a historical fiction reader, usually. Like, I really enjoyed the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So if you liked that one, this is like right up your alley. Definitely pick this one up. But yeah, I am so surprised by this because I don't really like historical fiction. But I loved this. I gave all of these four stars but as a whole for the whole series I, like I haven't finished the whole series yet but as a whole I would give them five but yeah I gave each of these four stars I have been thoroughly enjoying my time with the Veronica Speedwell books I'm on to the sixth book now I only have two left so hopefully she keeps releasing more like installments in it because I don't want it to end it's so much fun I also picked up the book of cold cases by Simone St. James. This was another book of the month pick so I added it on. I read The Burning Girls by Simone St. James and I really liked it. It's like a paranormal thriller with dual timelines and basically this one follows this blogger, a true crime blogger. I think her name is Shay. And she meets this woman, Beth Greer, who was accused and acquitted of these two murders that happened back in the 70s in this town. And they never really figured out like who the real murderer was, but Beth was never charged. And so Shay is like trying to get the inside scoop on that, on what really happened all those years ago. And so it's told in like dual timeline, like you see Shay in the present day and then you see Beth's past kind of to get a more like well-rounded picture but there's also some like spooky paranormal things going on with it it was a really fun time ashley did this as like a community buddy read on her channel and she premiered her vlog for this which was really really fun so i definitely wanted to get to this one in march because of that and i'm really glad i did it was a fun time it wasn't anything like crazy special again like i like i said about the paris apartment like it was a good thriller and I really like the dual timeline aspect that Simone St. James seems to use because it was the same in The Burning Girls. So I'm going to try to pick up The Sundown Motel next because that's another one of hers that I haven't read yet. But I really like the paranormal aspect of it. It just adds to the like eerie spook factor. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. Then I read The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. So I read this one for the Backlist Readathon. I read the third and fourth Veronica Speedwell book for the Backlist Readathon. 
and this book, The Burning Girls. I have a vlog for the Backlist Readathon if you want to watch my reactions of reading these books, but I picked this one up because Ashley did a comparison video of like if you like this show or movie then read this book and she compared it to Midnight Mass which I really really liked and so I was very curious to get to this one and so yeah it fulfilled one of the prompts so I picked it up because I had the audio from my library. Basically it follows this vicar and her daughter who are requested to move back to this small town and preside over this church and they do these things called the burning girls because back in like the 1500s they tortured and burned at the stake these two girls like accused for witchcraft and they do this like little ritual where they make these little dolls out of twigs and they burn them like in remembrance of it I guess but then there's also something else that's going on in this town it's all kind of like a big mystery and so you follow the vicar and then you also follow her daughter yeah it was definitely a fun time I'm really glad that I finally got to that one because I have been meaning to read that one for a while I gave it four out of five stars but honestly I'm starting to kind of forget some of it so maybe it's like more like a three it was really fun at the time but like not super memorable I guess so four out of five. The next book that I finished was The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This was the first book for the Sarah J Maas read-along that I was talking about earlier. So Christina and I reread this one and we did a live show on it which was so much fun. I am just having the time of my life with that read-along. But yeah, I recently finished my reread of the Throne of Glass series, like I think this year. Yeah, I finished my reread of it in January. So it's it's not been that long since I finished it. But because I wanted to read every single Sarah J Mass book, obviously I wanted to start with this one. Christina's never read the Throne of Glass series, so we wanted to start like with the OG, you know? And the only way I can describe rereading this is it feels like coming home. Like <laughs> I know that's like an incredibly cheesy way to put it, but it is like like an extreme version of nostalgia almost. Like I I am so happy reading this knowing that I'm gonna love every single second of it. It literally makes me wanna like tear up when I think about it too much because I, it's just, oh, this series means so much to me. It's my favorite series, even though I'm sure you know A Court of Mist and Fury is my favorite book of all time. And there's some of my favorite characters in that series, but this series is my favorite series. Like the story arc, the character development, everything is so amazing and so it was super super fun to pick this up and reread it add some more annotations so obviously this was a five out of five then i did a 24 hour readathon while i was on my spring break and i read four books for that but two of them were read in march the other two were read on april 1st so those don't count but if you watch that vlog i'll leave it linked up above you'll know the other two but the first book that i picked up was gallant by v.e schwab this is V.E. Schwab's new release. It's like a very spooky, eerie tale, but it's written so beautifully. Like it is the writing from V.E. Schwab that I love. It's so whimsical and magical, but this one obviously had like a darker twist to it. So basically the back says, everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. And that's basically what the story is like. <laughs> I know that's super vague if you don't know the actual synopsis. I went into this knowing next to nothing and I had such a fun time reading it so that's how I would recommend going into this one but if you want to know the the synopsis basically it's about this girl Olivia Pryor who has spent her life in an orphanage she doesn't have many friends she doesn't talk and all she has is this journal from her mother that basically tells her she'll be safe as long as she never goes to Gallant Eventually she gets this letter from her uncle that says hey we really want to meet you we just found out about you come to Gallant and so, of course, she does, and there's more going on in this house than meets the eye. There's ghosts, there's a mystery, there's something dark going on. That's all I'm going to say about this one, but it was a super, super quick read. It just went by so fast. It was like the perfect thing to read for a 24-hour readathon. I do believe V.E. Schwab said that this is best read in a single sitting, and I would totally agree with that. It was so much fun to just fly through the whole thing. I gave this like a 4.5 or a 5. I haven't quite settled on it yet, but I loved this. And then, unfortunately, I ended the month with Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. Um, I picked this up because it gets compared to Sarah J Mass all the time and I'm a huge Sarah J Mass fan. People said that Sarah J Mass's writing was likely inspired from this and that it's such a good fantasy and 
blah, blah, blah. So I picked this up and I just kept expecting it to get better. I should have ended up DNFing this because it was not worth it to read 400 pages of this. But like at 50 pages in, I was normally I would be like, yeah, I'm not feeling this DNF. But I was like, it's going to get better. Everybody says it's going to get better. So I kept hoping that it would get better. And then the synopsis says that the main character develops magical power she can't control. So I figured that was going to play a big role in this. But they get mentioned like a couple times and nothing really comes of that. I'm assuming that the next book in the series is going to explore that more. But like, I don't know. I just, this, the writing was super mediocre. The main character was very bland and boring. I didn't care about her at all. There was like a random romance that popped up out of nowhere. It was just, it was not a good time. I, I gave this two stars, like 1.5 even. So that was what I ended the month on, unfortunately. But I, then I read... Like I finished out my 24 hour readathon, so I read more. <laughs> so yeah, those are the 14 books that I read this month. Let's pick up the stack here. So yeah, here are all 14 of the books that I read this month. I had some really, really good ones. I found some new favorites. I reread some old favorites, but then I had a couple that I just really did not enjoy and that I should have just DNF'd, but I was just expecting them to get better. I think I've learned my lesson though on those. Like if I'm not enjoying it by 100 pages, I don't even care if it gets better. It's just not worth it. <laughs> So yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, leave the butterfly emoji for the Veronica Speedwell book since she's a butterfly hunter. So leave the butterfly emoji in the comments down below if you made it to the end. And thank you again so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. It really helps support my channel and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.